guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Christian Koivuma and I'm a Swedish watercolor artist. And in today's video, I'm gonna share some of my latest big watercolors. And the reason for this is, uh, well, mainly because some of you guys have been asking me how come I don't paint uh, bigger watercolors than the small ones that I post on YouTube. Uh, and I do, I've been doing that for quite some time. Um, mostly, I do paint a small watercolor to start and it's kind of a practice and I videotape it and I post it on YouTube for you guys and uh, if I like the result sometimes I use the same technique to paint a bigger watercolor so that's a tip for you guys if you want to try that so um, these uh, 10 a little bit bigger watercolors I'm gonna send them off to my gallery this weekend so uh, this is probably the last time I'm gonna see him in a while uh, and I want to share these uh, with you guys and talk you through and uh, explain a little bit about the process and uh, what I was thinking while painting these. So I hope you will enjoy this video. So this is the first one I'm gonna show you. This is a uh, uh, Northern Light scene and I've been doing these for quite some years and uh, Obviously, when I paint these, uh, what I'm mostly inspired about is the beautiful sky, but also uh, putting focus on the building in this one. So I'm gonna show you some details here on the facade with the warm cars. And I sometimes get questions about uh, the process of painting uh, paintings like this and uh, Pretty much all there is to it is uh, painting wet in wet, making sure the paper is wet while you apply the paint. So that's the first one I'm gonna show you guys. And uh, here's the second one. This is uh, a painting that I did uh, last week. And uh, the location is Stockholm, and the building in the background is the City Hall of Stockholm. Uh, probably one of the most famous buildings in Sweden. And uh, I was obviously inspired by the, uh, the building and the location, but also uh, I wanted to get the reflections in it, as you can see here in the bottom. Uh, and I always love painting uh, cars. And it's, it's always a challenge because um, uh, sometimes I use a little bit too many details and sometimes I don't use enough. But this time I was kind of happy about how they turned out. Okay, here's the same building actually. This is City Hall from the other direction. And uh, the photo reference I took was from the same day. And uh, I really like this painting, how it turned out. Uh, the contrast, the details with the big sky. And uh, I'm going to take you closer to the background. And you can see the bridge and some subtle details in the background. But uh, most of it is for the imagination to, to finish what's there some buildings, some rooftops, and so on. And also a nice little touch with the reflections in the water. Okay, and here's the next one. And uh, this one is uh, also the exact same building, City Hall in Stockholm. And this is uh, from a summer picture. And I was inspired by the warm colors in the, in the sky, but also the beautiful clouds. And uh, the composition is an important thing of this painting right here. You have the high tower uh, with the uh, building that most Swedes recognize and it creates a beautiful L composition. Uh, I also had fun with uh, creating the lights here. and I, I used uh, masking fluid to start and then I lifted off some paint. This one was a fun project. Okay, here's the next one. Uh, for people that uh, live in Sweden and like to uh, climb mountains and hike, 
might recognize this location. This is uh, right next to the highest mountain in Sweden. Uh, I've been there uh, a couple of times and I love it. Uh, and I find a lot of inspirations for that location. So I had a great time painting this one. Um, especially the, the water, the moving of the water, where I had to paint fast and let the, the paint do what it wants to do and not to get focused too much on details. And then also uh, the challenge of trying to create depth in the painting. Not putting too much details on the mountains, but still enough so you can see what's there and recognize it. Also, I think it's an important element for this uh, painting is the shadows here. Kind of lifting up the mountains and makes the whole piece a little bit more interesting to watch. Uh, here's a, another watercolor of a, of a forest. I like painting trees, which you probably realized if you've been following me for quite some time. And in this piece, I was uh, trying to uh, play around with the light and the light source with the sun here, trying to get it to get the sense of actually uh, shining. Uh, and what's important here is contrast. You have to work with contrast. I have the dark, cooler colors surrounding this light spot, uh, but also uh, getting there the light beams, which are created by lifting paint. And here's another one. This is a lo local motif. Um, and I've been doing a lot of paintings from this motif in different times of the year, summer, fall, uh, and in the winter, of course, as you can see here. And at this one, I played around with the colors, trying to create effects here with the spraying water to it. and actually trying to get some movement into the painting too by adding people and uh, this runner. And uh, some effects on the trees up there too, which has not been created by salt, which a lot of people ask me about. Uh, I just use a spray bottle to create these uh, blossoms. And this motif is from a, a city called Linköping. It's about an hour from where I live. And uh, this is where the gallery that sells most of my watercolors is located. Um, I saw this building when I dropped off some paintings one day and I decided then that this is something that I wanted to capture in a watercolor. It's uh, beautiful with all the windows and this old style of uh, architecture really caught my attention. And I found a little effect I tried capturing is the, the church in the background, using some colors, letting them kind of uh, float into each other. And in this painting, I'm, I painted a winter landscape and uh, I painted my favorite tree, which is the birch tree. Uh, some of you might have uh, actually taken the course with me where I teach uh, how to paint these. Um, and if you're interested in, in doing that, the links are down below. The fun thing with this painting was uh, creating the reflections in the, in the water here. It's kind of a neat effect. And also creating the depth where you can see the water uh, going into the background like this. Uh, but also adding trees like this with not too many details and letting the, the water uh, do its blooming and the, the effects that it wants to do. It's kind of, a, kind of a simple way of painting, but it still creates depth and interest to the painting in a pretty neat way. It's funny though, because birch trees, they seem to always look good in the landscape. Uh, and I'm happy how they turn out in this one. And 
here's the last painting I'm gonna show you guys. This is, uh, if you live somewhere in the south or close to the equator, you might never see something like this uh, where you live. But this is uh, it's actually trees covered in snow. Um, and this is quite common up in the north, where you can see the snow getting stuck to the trees like this. And uh, painting this obviously was inspired by the lights, uh, like uh, an earlier painting I showed you with trees. But this one was quite fun and also trying to uh, get the effect of uh, the trees there and creating depth with the trees in the background here with, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and you can see there's not too many details on those. And all the details and contrasts are in the trees in the foreground like this. There. That was it for this time. I, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully some of you got inspired and want to try something similar. And uh, I hope I will see you in the next video. Have a great one. Bye bye.